Oh, hi there. I'm Professor Gene Powers, and I'm here to talk to you about vaccinomics, a promising new area of science. Let's jump right in. Vaccinomics is the study of genes and vaccines. First, let's talk about genes. What are genes? Well, genes play an important role in determining physical traits, how we look, and lots of other stuff about humans. They carry information that makes humans unique. Curlier straight hair, longer short legs, even how you might smile or laugh. Many of these things are passed from one generation to the next in a family by genes. Next up, vaccines. Most of you are probably familiar with vaccines. They can play an important role in keeping us healthy. They protect us from serious and sometimes deadly diseases like measles and polio. So what do genes have to do with vaccines? Genes influence how people respond to infections and vaccines. While the majority of people respond well to vaccines, some people don't. For example, some people may feel a bit sore after they receive a vaccine, or others may feel a bit run down after receiving a vaccine. And some may have a rare but very serious reaction. But why does one person react one way and another person react in a different way? The answer in part may have to do with vaccinomics. Just like your genes can make your hair curly or straight, your genes may play a role in how you react to vaccines. Other factors that influence how people respond to vaccines include their diet, stress, and the environment, among other things. With me so far? Good. Genes can influence a person's response to infectious diseases and to vaccines. But let's break this down in another way. Have you ever wondered why some people who get sick from the same cold feel totally different? One person can get a little runny nose and otherwise feel pretty good, while the other person can feel achy, run down, get a high fever, and not be able to get out of bed. Why does this happen? How a person responds to a cold is influenced by their genes, as well as by diet, their environment, their previous exposures to infections, stress, etc. In this same way, vaccinomics could help us understand why certain people respond to vaccines in a particular way. This can be done by studying a person's genes. There's a lot to learn from vaccinomics, so let's talk about its potential. Most vaccines are 80 to 90% effective at preventing diseases, but some vaccines are not as effective. Vaccinomics could help us understand why some people are more protected, which could then lead to more effective vaccines, ensuring that everyone who receives the vaccine has a higher chance of protection. Next, most people respond well to vaccines. The risk for serious adverse reactions is very small, about one in a million. However, there are more than 300 million people in the US. For those individuals affected, vaccinomics could help us understand the role genes play in certain serious adverse reactions and either guide us to develop even safer vaccines or change our recommendations of who should get the vaccine. This could make that one out of one million closer to zero out of one million. Let's think about another example of how vaccinomics may help us lead healthier lives. Just like some people get sicker with a cold than other people, certain people are more likely to spread a flu virus and get others sick. Vaccinomics could help identify these groups of people. They could then be prioritized for vaccination, which would reduce the spread of diseases and ultimately less people would get sick. So to wrap it up, vaccinomics is the study of genes and vaccines. Genes can influence an individual's response to vaccines. And with vaccinomics, we hope to potentially improve vaccine safety and efficacy. This will let us be even smarter about who gets what vaccines, when they should get it, what dose they should receive, and how protective it may be for them. Thanks for taking the time to learn a bit about vaccinomics. I'm Professor Gene Powers. Thanks for watching.